Hey, I'm Ben from Modern Gram, and today I'm going to give you a Modern Gram valuation of Huntington Bank Shares, Inc. So be sure to stick around to hear what I think of this company. Okay, so we've got Huntington, Huntington Bank Shares, Inc. The ticker is HBAN. The current price is 1042. The sector is financial services, and of course, this is a bank. Now over here, we've got the items from the balance sheet that I find most important. We have the total current assets, the total current liabilities, the long-term debt, the total assets, the intangible assets, the total liabilities, and the outstanding shares. All of these figures will come into play in the valuation. Over here, we have a nice chart that gives us detail or show, shows the changes in earnings and dividends per share over the last 30 years. And you can see that the the chart is a little bit skewed by the great financial crisis of 2008 when there was a huge drop in earnings. You can see that earnings were going up and stable and then of course they dropped and so did that dividend, but they are stable again. Let's look at the details. Now over here we have a chart showing or the, uh, a table showing the details of earnings per share over that time period. And you can see here is the financial crisis. It dropped big time there. And then we have this column here, which is earnings per share modern gram. That is a weighted average of the last five years of earnings. And that can help smooth out the balance cycle or the, the business cycle. And so we take a weighted average of the last five years with the most weight on the current year and the least weight five years ago. And like I said, that smooths out that business cycle. So that big drop in 2009 got spread out over time and that can kind of give you a better sense of where the company is going overall. And so it, it took a while for that to kind of get out of there, but you can see these smaller movements down here like 2016 that didn't have as big of an impact on the earnings. And similarly, in 2019, they had a jump, and it was a little bit smoother on the weighted average side. So that can help with your valuation and making it a little bit more accurate. Dividends, we can see that the company has continued to pay its dividend all through the 30 years, despite the big drop in earnings. And that dividend growth, hasn't been fully consistent throughout the 30 years, but they did put a priority on their dividends, like I said. And you can see that dividend payout ratio has fluctuated significantly because of that emphasis on their dividends. So then stage one of the analysis is to determine if the company is suitable for the defensive investor or the enterprising investor. And keep in mind, the defensive investor is one who is not willing to go into deep research into individual companies, so their requirements are very stringent. And here we have market cap has to be over $2 billion. This one passes that at $15 billion. It has to have a current ratio greater than 2. This one passes at 2.81. It has to have 10 years of positive earnings to show stability in earnings. It passes that. Dividends have to be um, made for 10 straight years, passes that. It has to have earnings growth of at least 33% in the last 10 years. It barely does that at 35%, but it passes, so we give it a passing grade there. And the PEMG, that is the price to earnings ratio using the weighted average earnings as the uh, earnings figure there. That has to be less than 20 here. It is 8.71, so we pass that. And then the price of the book has to be under 2.5, and it passes that at 0.92. So if you've been keeping count, we've got a perfect score of 7 out of 7 for the defensive investor. For the enterprising investor, it is automatically suitable for the enterprising investor because it is suitable for the defensive investor. And the enterprising investor requirements are not as stringent because that investor type is willing to go to even more research into a company. And But we'll go through the, the requirements here just, uh, just for fun. The current ratio has to be over 1.5. It is 2.81, so it passes that. The debt-to-net current assets has to be 
under 1.1, it just barely fails that at 1.11. So it technically is a fail. Earning stability, it has to have positive earnings for five straight years. It passes that. Currently pays a dividend. It passes that and it needs to have earnings greater than they were five years ago it passes that so we've got four out of five for the enterprising investor now if you are liking this video please take a moment to hit that like button subscribe to the channel and download the free valuation calculator found in the link below in the description and in the pinned comment and here are some testimonials of people who have liked my uh, content in the past Stage two is a determination of intrinsic value. And remember, value is separate from price. Value is what the company is worth. Price is what the market is willing to pay at this time. And to calculate value, we take Benjamin Graham's formula from his book, The Intelligent Investor, and we've updated it to use that weighted average earnings in here. So the formula is value equals earnings per share modern gram times 8.5 plus two times the growth rate. And as you can see, we've got two variables to calculate in the formula, so let's get to it. Earnings per share, again, like I've said multiple times, it is a weighted average of the last five years of earnings. So we get 1.2 here. We take that and we take the number from five years ago of 1.09, calculate a total growth of 9.72% over those five years, Divide that by five and you get an average growth of 1.94%. And then we throw in a safety margin here because growth is a key variable in the formula. You don't want to overestimate. So we have a little bit of a safety valve uh, margin here just to bring that down a little bit to be a little bit safer and more conservative. And the growth estimate comes out to 1.46% here. Plugging those numbers into the formula, we have a value of 13.66, and you can see on this very handy chart over here, the value is then higher than the price. So that comes down here to Modern Gram Opinion, and we have the current price is 76% of the intrinsic value, so it gets a fairly valued rating in the Modern Gram system. A few other things to note. The value based on 3% growth would be 1735, and based on 0% growth, it would be 1017. Now, if you take price and plug it into value in the formula and then solve for growth, you find that the market is implying a growth rate of only 0.1%. And so if you think the company will grow more than that in perpetuity, then it would be an indication that the company is undervalued. If you think it would grow less than that, it would be overvalued. It's just another way of looking at that value formula. Coming down here to the modern gram grade, we can, uh, this is a system that adds a little bit of other factors in. So you're not just relying on that one formula and you're looking at other parts of the company and it can help you compare the company to other companies and other industries so it gets two points for being suitable for defensive investors gets half a point for being a fair value one point for trading below its gram number zero for having long-term dividend growth because again it does not quite have that it gets half a point for having a dividend yield above 2%, half a point for trading below its PEMG, and zero points for trading below its net current asset value. So the total score here is 4.5, which is an A- minus grade. Stage 3, at this point, if you've determined that the company is suitable for your investor type, and you've determined that it is a good price that you want to look at, then it is time to do further research to determine if it is suitable for your individual portfolio. And only you can do this. You can look at things like your own personal goals. You can look at your diversification needs and go from there. So a few things, net current asset value formula, this would be a floor to your to the value, but here it is negative, so it doesn't apply. 
Graham number formula. This is a formula that has been derived from those defensive investor requirements in order to give a number to them and really give it a little bit easier way of comparing one company to another. And here, the Graham number comes to $18.57, which of course is higher than the price. And that could be another indicator that it is undervalued. And again, the PEMG comes to 8.71. The current ratio is 2.81. The price to book ratio is 0.92. The dividend yield is currently 5.95%. It has 13 years of consecutive uh, dividend growth. And then here's some figures about share buybacks. It has uh, actually been issuing some stock, I believe. That is what these negative numbers would mean. And the insider buys, there's been one insider buy in the last three months. Moving on to stage four in the analysis. Here is where we start to uh, apply some technical analysis. If you've gotten to this point and you're interested in entering a position, now is the time to look at the chart to find the right time to get in. You never want to use technical analysis and charts to uh, determine whether something is a good investment. That is what fundamental analysis is for. You want to look at the actual company to figure out if it's a good company to invest in. But technical analysis can be useful when trying to time that right to maximize your profits. And here we have this chart. I have it set up so that we have moving averages here. So you can see it's kind of been on a bearish trend, although it is starting to indicate that it might be switching over to a bullish trend by being above that short-term moving average. It'd be interesting if it breaks above the middle-term moving average the blue line at some point and then down here we have the relative strength index which indicates whether the company is oversold or overbought and you can see like down here in early may it was a little bit oversold it dropped quite a bit and then it kind of recovered that doesn't really give you an indication long term where the company might be moving but what I like to do one thing that I'm finding and testing out in my own methods right now is I'm combining the relative strength index with the Bollinger Band width. And you can see when it tightens a bit, what I like to do is I like to look to see where these moving averages are on the relative strength index. And when the Bollinger Bands are tightened, there starts to be more pressure because the company is consolidating or like the price, the market is consolidating at that point. And you can see that back here, it consolidated and this got tighter and tighter to about you know, 0.04. And then there was more downward pressure because the moving averages on the relative strength index were up higher. And that indicates to me that it's more likely that when it comes out of the period of consolidation, it will be going down rather than going up. And conversely here, it has come down quite a bit, but I mean, it could go down a little bit more, but it is at a point where once that consolidation is done and this tightens up even more, it might be time for it to have more upward pressure and it may uh, see an upward movement there. But those are things that I look at. You may have your own methods that you use. But regardless, I hope you've liked the video. Be sure to click on the video or yeah, on the video that you see on the screen now. It will take you to another valuation that you will enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Take care.